guys, I'm here with a special guest today. His name is Jeremy Steiner, and he is with Quad City Christian School. Mm -hmm. uh, a little bit of history here. In 1993, I graduated from Temple Christian wow. Academy. Oh, oh my god. All gosh. the way back in the day. All right, you're a legend. Man, Bill Olmstead <laughs> yes. was our principal. Yeah. And uh, so my my parents, I don't know if they if they seen horrible tendencies <laughs> in my personality or what it was, okay. but uh, I went to public school until I was in second grade. Okay. By third grade, I was in Miss Burns' class okay. uh, at Temple Christian. And, changed your uh, life. It changed my <laughs> life, man. Yeah. I don't know. I, I think I changed the teachers' lives yeah. by being there. There's and, a few of those kids. <laughs> man, I, it, it, uh, you, you realize very quickly that just because it's a Christian school that not everybody's Christian, mm -hmm. but there's certainly a foundation that's laid. And I got to say, I appreciate the Christian mm. foundation that I got awesome. at a Christian school. Yeah. Um, I still quote a lot of the scriptures I learned Amen. in Bible class with Miss Oberg and okay. and Mr. Almstead mm -hmm. and so many that uh, did our Bible classes. I think about we we used to do. I don't know if you guys still do it or not. We used to do a retreat, mm -hmm. and we'd go away for five days, Monday yep. through Friday. And uh, man, I can still remember some of my friends that were absolute heathens that were on their face at the altar Amen. during one of them five day retreats. Yeah. And so many of them guys are serving the Lord now. Amen. And That's awesome. Almost all of us walked away from God. Yeah. And then came full circle. And uh, I, it wow. just goes to show you that train a child in the way he should go, and when he's older, he won't depart from it. Amen. You know, came to fruition for me and a lot of my classmates anyway. And the fourteen of us that graduated yeah. in nineteen ninety three. Yeah. So, uh, matter of fact, one of them that I thought probably would have set the record for the worst kid ever graduated from that school is in ministry now as a yes. youth pastor. <laughs> Come on. So it's uh, it's been interesting. But thanks for joining us yeah, today, man. my pleasure. I'm glad. Yeah, so tell us about your position and what you do at Quad yeah, City Christian. Yeah, so I'm the superintendent of Quad City Christian School in my third year. Um, really kind of just took it over and wanted more of a spiritual direction instead of education. And... Uh, really thought that I'd be the right guy. So I was actually a missionary in South Africa. Wow. And um, God spoke to me to come back, and I didn't know where or how or what that was going to look like, and he opened this door. I myself would have never thought I would have been in education, but it just worked out that way. And, you know, it takes a year or two to get your feet wet in any new position, but now our school is growing and exploding, so we are actually nine people away from the peak of Temple. Wow. 1989. So we are nine students away of hitting the peak. And I really feel like the hand of God is on it. And yeah, he's blessing it and he's moving it in a direction that is growing tremendously. So. Yeah. So so how, when have you seen the greatest growth over the three years that you've been there? So looking back sure. kind of on attendance records mm -hmm, and things mm -hmm. of that nature, um, what has triggered the growth or when have you seen the most growth in the sure. school? I think, um, well, studying back in the day, I think it was the strength of principal, strength of teacher, strength of product, um, and then people just really seeing a need for it. I'm not sure what was happening in 1989, but apparently yeah. people found a need because you see a, a jump, if you will. Okay. Then I think over changes in administration or a few things that have happened in the history of Temple that some there was some lulls so i feel like we are strengthening that product yep um, bringing myself on we have a principal at each campus we have some strength in the product that we're delivering but then like i'm sure we're going to talk about the public school the state of illinois has kind of helped yep bring people to our school that people now need a christian school yep some desired it and it's always been something they've wanted now it's become a need Mm -hmm. uh, I either have this option or have this option, and so they've decided that I'm going to send them. So we've seen the most growth between the last two years. Yeah, um, and I do think that there was some stability. I think even when I was brought on, it was kind of we hit a strong plateau. Mm -hmm. Like, is this thing going to sink? Are we done with Christian education in the Quad Cities for Quad City Christian School, or is you know God going to step in and intervene? So at that point. I was like, you know, I'm on fire. I'm passionate. We got this. We're raising up world changers. And yeah. I just got fired up about it. And you just saw a tick. And a lot of it was you changed the vibe in the community. The, the public school is changing. And so all of a sudden you have these people coming. So we saw the most growth 
in the past two years. We've seen 40% growth this past year. My goodness. Yeah. So 40%. So you need, you either got a great product or you just got something that people need and they're, they're willing to partner with you. So yeah. We're heading well, in that direction. I can tell you that so many people in my own family, mm -hmm. extended relatives, nieces, have kids sure. now. <clears throat> they're seeing what's going on, and, mm -hmm. and they don't like what they see sure. from a public school standpoint. So they began to look at Christian education. Yeah. And as they started picking up, up the phone, making phone calls, they mm -hmm. realized, well, we have a waiting list. Or, mm -hmm. hey, we're coming to the end of our enrollment because mm -hmm. we're almost full at full capacity. Sure. And, uh, and so I've definitely heard mm. the murmurs, even in my own sure. family, of people sure. saying, if you want your kid to go to Christian school, you better get them signed up because yeah. there's not going to be an opening for them. That's the truth. Um, and so uh, my nephew actually uh, put the deposit down and paid for his okay. kids to go to public or to, to Christian school, okay. but then sent them to public school okay. for the first week until he realized, yep, it's as bad as I thought it, it would was. be, or at, or the things that he did wasn't standing for, mm -hmm. they were enforcing. Yep. And so that's when they made the decision, okay, well, we're going to go ahead and send them, because sure. the private school started a week or so later than the public school okay. did. So he had a little bit of leeway there, but... Yeah. Uh, yeah, I've definitely seen a, a spike even in our own church between sure. homeschool uh, oh, yeah. mm -hmm. and Christian school. Mm -hmm. And I know we have a lot of students in your school. Yeah, and true. over the years, there's been a number of students and mm -hmm. families that have been involved at Quad City Christian. Yep. Um, and so it's it's been something that, uh, that has been no stranger to our congregation, awesome. for sure. Um, but uh, so I, I appreciate you coming on and yeah. speaking to the to the issues and and things of that nature. I have a friend in Chicago, and mm -hmm. he was just telling me this week or last week actually um, that he pulled his kids out and put them in a Christian school mm -hmm. because of some of the radical policies that sure. the public schools are adopting yep. with gender identity mm -hmm. and things of that nature. Um, you know that I, I think that is one of the deal breakers for a lot of parents. Mm -hmm. And when the public school tries to take the uh, the power out of the parents' hands sure. to determine how their kid is is going to be counseled, mm -hmm. that's that's sometimes a straw that breaks the camel's back, and that's mm -hmm. what it was for them, because the schools in Chicago then had said, if your kid comes and they're they're confused about their gender, mm -hmm. we can counsel, we will counsel them and even help them with hormones and other medications to change towards another gender mm -hmm. without parent consent. Yeah. And that's yeah. horrifying to think that the school is stepping in as an authority figure over mm -hmm. a parent. Um, and so I don't know where that's going or how deep that will end up getting in our nation, but I know that's been one of the things that's uh, affected friends of mine sure. and their choice about pulling their kids from public school. Sure. Um, I certainly never want to discount the fact that we have public school teachers, principals, superintendents mm -hmm. that are godly yep. people, and they're really, uh, I think they're in their positions almost in a missional mentality, mm -hmm. like, sure. hey, I'm here to be a light. Mm -hmm. Whether I can communicate Christ, I can be Christ. Sure. And they take that role very seriously, and I certainly never want to discount that mission that God's laid on their hearts. Mm -hmm. Um, but I think there's a point for all parents where you ask the question, is my kid strong enough personality-wise mm -hmm. to take a stand sure. and to maintain some moral ground in mm -hmm. the environment that's being presented to them? Sure. And so what? how much of that have you guys seen, and what, what have you guys seen in your own schools as far as, is it mostly Christian families coming in? Are there mm -hmm. also secular families coming in? Sure. So my approach is evan evangelistic. So you have many Christian schools that are covenant schools or they're going to build a partnership with the family, meaning that one family member, mom or dad, is a believer, does go to church, and they build a covenant with family and school. Um, I feel more evangelical. I feel like that's what the Bible is, not discounting them, but I feel like that's my DNA. So I do. We welcome all people from all different backgrounds, yep. Christian or not. You know, three things that I pride ourselves on is safe environment, spiritual growth, and strong academics. So the safe environment is key in a time like this because whether you're a strong believer or not, if the school is persuading your child to make decisions that are outside of your control, 
you feel like you're not being parent. You're, you're being stripped of those um, things that God has called you to do to raise up your child in the ways of the Lord. So, for instance, we had uh, several students come, and one of the students that came this year was being persuaded at their school, and they now are offering clubs for you to um, question your identity, question your gender, and they're helping you discover that. So they were lured away to try something new during school hours, and she was just like, I can't do this to my child. I need my child to be able to ask me those questions and and ask me how, how we can walk through that emotionally, physically, or whatever might come from it. So they simply chose our school because they thought that we would be a safe environment and would include the parents in that conversation. So we do have people from different walks of life that are coming, and some may be Christian or I believe in the Bible, but I don't really go to church, but I just know that this is a better environment than what my child is experiencing in the public school. So you're seeing a good chunk of those, and then you're finally seeing some of those Christians who have put their hope and belief that they could be missional in where they're at. And I'm not saying you can't, Mm -hmm. but that was their hope. But then at the end of the day, their kids are being persuaded. Yeah. So when you're with someone's kid 40 hours a week, you have the opportunity to persuade them. And let's just be honest, if life gets busy and your kids go to school and they come home and you have sport and you have this and you have that, and you don't have those five to 30 minutes to interact with your child, you don't know what's been downloaded for eight hours. And yep. then you're finding things almost too late. Yeah. Like, oh my gosh, this is happening to my child. And now they're questioning, like we talked about earlier, questioning the Bible. They're questioning different things about their phys- physique and what their friends are saying. And you're like, oh, no, hold on. we That's what I'm here for. That's what I'm yep. here for. But they're being indoctrinated yep. in a different direction. Yeah, that's a scary thing. And it, we're seeing it more and more in our mm-hmm. nation. Mm-hmm. And... uh Man, it's it's horrifying. Now, not only from just the moral aspect of yes. things at your school, but mm-hmm. how does uh, the academic side of your sure. school compare to public education? Because I let's be I think that in in some public school sectors, we've leaned so far towards an agenda to mm-hmm. indoctrinate in mm-hmm. some ways that we've backed away from giving them the solid, solid education they need to be successful. Yeah. And I think sometimes our test scores comparatively, maybe to other nations or stuff too, should be something that we look at and begin to ask ourselves the question, are we succeeding in our education mm. uh, for our kids in America? Um, I'm certainly not an educator. Sure. I've been involved in school life, and I've been involved with students for 23 years mm-hmm. and uh, involved in the hallways of schools but um, that's that seems like something that be, is is slipping. Mm-hmm. And uh, how does your school academically compare to a public school academically? Sure, what they're learning. Um, yeah, and the environment I think comes back to what you kind of hit on was the curriculum and what are you teaching? And I think that you can get similar results academically, but still teach from a biblical curriculum. So we start at the young age of pre-K, and we start um, going through a Christian curriculum. Uh, There's lots of publishers out there. We've chosen two publishers that we kind of flip back and forth with a few different subjects, but that really is the backbone all the way up until almost ninth grade, a little bit in eighth grade. Then you'll see some of those shifts when you're coming to math or uh, different classes that where you can get stronger academics that doesn't necessarily need to be from a Christian worldview. Mm -hmm. Now, the sciences, we stick to, you know, Christian publishers and curriculum in order to make sure that they are lining up with the Bible. And then, of course, we have Bible class five days a week that Mm -hmm. we are then taking them through a journey, either a curriculum packet or different parts of the Bible, different time periods of the Bible, making sure that they finish from K through 12 with a well-rounded understanding of what Scripture is, what it means, what did happen, and then how to apply that to your life. That's interesting. That's that's incredible. Now, test score wise, do you guys do any kind of like public testing that is state certified? You know, like sure, things? yeah. There's a lot of philosophies now of what is right and what isn't right. Yep. So, um, I'm actually being mentored by a large school in Florida right now, and we are actually changing that in the middle of it. 
we did Iowa test scores yep. and we thought that, hey, we should do this because that is state recognized. That is across the board. You have many states that are that participate in that. But what we were finding out is our curriculum is now beginning to shift from what you're being tested on. Mm -hmm. So now in order to get your test results up, what we've seen other schools do is now they're teaching towards the test, if that makes sense. Yep. Because you need the test score to get more funding. So let's teach towards the test, strengthen the test results, and let's only measure people that are above the line and those that are below, we're not gonna measure them as much. So we did that for a couple years, taking that test. And I would say we were average, maybe even a little bit below average. And I don't know that I can pinpoint the why behind that, but I don't think that it's beneficial to our students. Again, you can go to a community college, a four-year college, and if your test scores are ever so slightly here or there, that isn't necessarily going to determine how well you're going to succeed, in my opinion, depending mm -hmm. on what university you choose. So we took that out, and now we're more investigating. Um, it's similar to a map testing, which a lot of parents hate. But what ours is is more of a measurement system in different periods. Mm -hmm. So you're only going to measure your math and your English at a very young age from K through, say, fourth grade. And you're going to measure that twice. You're going to measure it at the beginning of the year, September, October. Then you're going to measure it second semester, February, March at the beginning. And then you're going to do a cumulative test to see where they overall test at the end. And we're now in the process of partnering with a, an organization to help us do that testing. Mm -hmm. And then what we've decided in high school is you do this standardized testing, which I'm, you know, I'm not against, but really high school, how is that going to prepare you for college? So I test well. All right, so what university do you choose? Well, we all know in the United States, you know, not dependent on your Iowa test scores, but it's really dependent on what? Your PSAT, which is to get you into your ACT or SAT and then your ACT. Those are the big ones that universities are looking. So now we're not testing at a high school level to a standardized test, but we're focusing on what is world um, nationwide accepting, going to give you the acceptance into a college. So we've kind of shifted this year, changing over to that mentality and are going to build on it for the future. Yeah. One of the things that, talking to your pastor, yeah. um, it, there's certainly a lot of vision for the school. Yes. And I know there's a lot of changes and there's a lot of future vision. Yep. Um, what are some of the things that are exciting that are coming down the pike for the Quad Cities uh, in lieu of, of Quad City Christian School? Sure. Um, I see growth. You know, I see uh, we're going to have the opportunity to welcome more and more people. So in order to do that, you need space. Yep. So we're currently looking for space, um, planning to hopefully build at our junior and senior high campus. And I want one building. You know, yeah. I see that when I drop my kids off, if they're across, you know, elementary to junior high or high school, I want one drop off. I don't yeah. want to go to two different locations. So I get that. I'm trying to make that happen so that we can move them together. But then I just see strength in product. Mm -hmm. You know, for so long, Christian education only has X amount of dollars to do X amount of things. Yeah. Well, the more capacity that you have for students and the more students that come, hopefully keeping tuition low enough, then you can expand and give them better programs, give them better hands-on opportunities, give them more in-depth STEM programs that everybody's needing, and then give them alternatives. Like mm -hmm. I don't want, you know, one of the things that I pride myself on is I don't want your kid to come in and be an A student. I think that that mentality is wrong. I want your kid to come in and be the best them. Mm -hmm. So if you have a C student, imagine trying to be an A student and you're always failing, that's going to beat you up. And then how does that launch you into college? Mm -hmm. Or what if we take the C student and we say, you know what, we see you're on average are a C student. How can we get you to be a B student? Mm -hmm. Let's not go for the A student, but let's make sure that you can become the best you. So it's assessing where every student is at and becoming the best them so that we can find ways. And again, not everybody's going to go to the four-year university. They're going to go to a community college or a trade school, which are all great things, yep. especially in the Quad Cities. We have yeah. many trades. Yep. So I'm beginning to explore those options. How are we giving them a hands-on experience for them to see trades up front, yep. to be able to hand get their hands on it, touch, feel things, to see if that's really what they want to go into? Yep. I'm all about measuring the individual student and then having them become the best you. So we're looking to move. We're looking to grow. We're looking for space. 
because right now, I mean, at the junior and senior high campus, we're busting at the seams. Yeah. We are going to try to move to a, a continuous enrollment to give our parents first decision, but we're going to be like those other schools you talked about that you've got to get your kids in there. We don't have space. Yeah. Because we're running into a capacity issue. Yep. Yeah. Well, and that's exciting. It's always it's yeah. always exciting to be at full capacity Correct. looking at how do we fix it versus wow, we got plenty of room here. Yeah. Because plenty of room means now you don't have the funds that you need to Correct. to provide the the type of school experience that the parents are looking for too. So right. I think it's exciting cuz Quad City Christian or Temple Christian mm-hmm. back in the day mm-hmm. uh was probably always kind of one of the more um successful schools or higher uh attended schools. So sure. it, it was one of the larger Christian schools in the area. Mm-hmm. And um, so it was always fun being a part of it. We always, I was always involved in the athletic side of things too. Yeah. And that was always important oh, yeah. to me going to school as a, as a kid. It's like Christian school, they don't have football or Christian school, yeah. but they had basketball, they had soccer, yeah. they had um, other options like that. And um, and it, it, here's here was a neat thing too, going to a public school your opportunities for athletics is probably less when you're up against a uh, hundred students for oh, position yeah. and a Christian be really school. Good. <laughs> yeah. You gotta be really good. Um, I, I coached basketball in, uh, the second largest school in Michigan. Okay. And, uh, and so I coached freshman basketball. We had 900 freshmen Oh my gosh. and we had about 150 try out for basketball. Wow. <laughs> How do you do down. that? Yeah. yeah. You narrow that down. So you've got, we had two teams, mm-hmm. we had an A team and we had a B team sure, sure. and we had about 20 kids, 18 kids on a team. Mm. And, um, it, it was very difficult to make the team. And that was one of the nice things about, Christian education as well. If your students are involved or uh, mm-hmm. interested in sports, but yeah. maybe they haven't played ASU and travel ball and did mm-hmm. all these camps, mm-hmm. and they're not uh, in the top five percent in in the Quad sure. Cities, they still have an opportunity to play yeah. and be a part Some of it. Time. Mm-hmm. Athletics, I think, does a lot to help develop us and and create disciplines in our life that can uh, make us make us better business owners and investors and mm-hmm. employee employees and employers in the future. So. Yeah. Um, I love that aspect of of the Christian school too, mm-hmm. and uh, so man, I, I appreciate what you guys are doing right here in the Quad Cities, mm-hmm. and I love the fact that it's right here in our own backyard, that's right. and that we have a phenomenal school, and uh, you know that's that is doing as well or or better than a lot of our public schools, even in mm-hmm. in some some ways. I definitely love the Christian values yes. that you guys have stuck to, and I think that's what a lot of parents are are really uh, interested in. Nowadays, mm-hmm. it, it, as far as a pastor with a congregation, when we have conversations, it's I want my kids to not be indoctrinated yeah. with things that are immoral and things that don't sure. line up with Scripture and with Big Bang Theory philosophies mm-hmm. and relativity and homosexuality and all these mm-hmm. other types of things that are now just accepted as uh, as truth and as normal Mm -hmm. and uh so it definitely creates a niche for you guys i think here in the quad cities so we want to support you guys and get behind you 100 percent with what you're doing so man is there anything else how can somebody find out more about your school if they're thinking about this sure yeah it's real easy you can just go to qcchristianschool.org or you can call the phone number which is 309-762-3800 we always say first step is to set up and get a tour. I want you to see the product for you to go in the classroom to experience it. Um, you can even pull your child and they could do a shadow day. You know, come and see what we have to offer. Make sure it's in line with what you're um, thinking it is. Yeah. And then after that, we start next step. So we actually are ramping up and ready for admissions. And that's really around the January, February, March where we start enrolling for next year. That's awesome. Yeah. Awesome. Well, man, thank you for your time Absolutely. and for casting some Exciting. vision for what's going on at Quad City Christian. Amen. So thank you for the opportunity. if you're interested in a Christian school, it's a yep. great one. Uh, I'm alumni myself, so um, connect with Jeremy and the school there. The website and phone number are at the bottom of the page. Thanks for joining us today for Pastor's Point. God bless you. Have a great day.